जयेश माता जी ऑनलाइन उपस्थित सभी सहयोगी भाई बहनों का आज के ध्यान सत्र में हार्दिक स्वागत है कलेक्टिव बंधन
चित्त सहस्त्रार पे प्रार्थना करते हैं परम पुजिश माता जी कृपा कर हमारे आत्म साक्षात्कार को दृढ़ कीजिए हमें पूर्ण संतुलन प्रदान कीजिए कुर्शन इसी ध्यान की अवस्था में बैठते हैं हम श्री माता जी की अमृत वाणी को ग्रहण करते हैं बट एज आई टोल्ड यू देर कुड बी गुड कंडीशनिंग इन द वे इन द सेम वे यू कैन हैव गुड हैबिट्स एंड बैड हैबिट्स इफ हैबिट्स इन हिबिट और ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट यूर असेंट दे ऑल्सो कैन हैव stabilize the conditioning comes to you from the matter with which we are dealing every day when a human being sees a matter he addresses it and he wants to use that matter for his own purpose He changes the forms of the matter for his own purpose. He starts getting used to matter as comfort or as a help or a guide in life. The more you start depending on matter, the more your spontaneity is finished because you are dealing with the dead. matter when it is dead then only we deal with it when it is living we are not so much bothered about it so the deadness of that matter settles within us when we start using that matter for our purpose but how are we to otherwise it exists is the question people can ask if god has given us these material things and this matter to be used are we not supposed to use them and are we not supposed to enjoy them but we don't enjoy really 
Before realization, you cannot enjoy any matter. You can only form a habit and may become a slave of that matter before realization. It's a principle of, fundamental principle of economics that wants in general are never satiated. Means today you want to buy something like a carpet, all right, bought it. So now that carpet becomes a headache because it's your possession, you have to look after it. You have to insure it, you have to worry about it that it doesn't get spoiled, first of all. And secondly, you really get into another mood of buying something else. Now you have bought the carpet, finished. Then you have to have something else, then you have to have something else, then you have to have something else. So it does not satiate you, it does not give you the joy. Matter can never give you joy. It's the spirit that gives you joy. And when the ascent takes place, then you become the spirit. Then matter takes another value system within ourselves. The value system of matter is very different. As I'm sure Jason must have told you, that when you get your realization, then you start feeling the cool breeze in the hand. In relationship to matter, it's very helpful to be realized so. Because immediately you know what is good for you and what is bad. For example, you eat something that's not good for you. Immediately you lose your vibrations or you become hot. Even looking at it may happen. You want to sit on a chair on which somebody who is a very wrong type of a person has sat. Immediately you feel, oh, something wrong with this place. With your vibrations, which is a definite thing and absolute thing. And this conditioning can only be over. These habits can be overcome only if you become the spirit, because spirit is always dominated by the matter. And the spirit has to overcome that domination of the matter. Actually, spirit cannot be dominated by anything. But what I mean is that it is covered, like the sun can be covered with clouds. In the same way, all our domination, or we can say all our, ens uh, all our enslavement of the matter makes us dominate our spirit in the sense that we cover it up. The clouds are there. We can't see the spirit. We can't feel it. The spontaneity, which is the beauty of the spirit, we do not feel in a person. So in judging a person, what do we judge? How that person looks, what dress he's wearing, how he walks, what are his formal ways, does he know how to say thank you, sorry or not, you see. All these things impress us very much. What sort of a car he has, say, what sort of a house. Maybe we may miss, we may miss a saint. We may miss Christ again because he was a carpenter's son. How are we to know who is Christ? Is there any way of finding out who is Christ? Many people are now talking, Christ is going to come, he's going to come on the television. You can put up anyone there as Christ. How are we going to make it up? By his dress or by some sort of a thing they have done? Most of the paintings of Christ and most of his uh, statues that I have seen are nowhere near Christ. Nowhere near Christ. See, they are horrid things. I don't know what are they. So how will you make it out that this is Christ or not? Or this is some sort of a focus pocus fellow or some sort of a person who has come just <laughs> deliberately to delude us from reality. There is no way out to find out what is the truth because we are so much used to material forms that we have. For example, our idea of art also is in the same way, molded. We like this kind of art. If you ask why, because you know, 
this is this kind of a thing, harmony, or maybe this is more proportioned and all that. Well, how do you know? You know, because you've read certain books, or maybe that you have understood from somebody else that this is art, this is beauty. I mean, you brand something as beauty, but is it really? If it is beauty, it should be spirit, because spirit is beauty and beauty is spirit. So is it, is it beauty? How do you make up that this art is beautiful or not? For example, according to all normal ideas of womanhood, I don't think Mona Lisa is a beautiful woman. I mean, the way these days you say mosquito-like women are regarded as beautiful. So how they call Mona Lisa so beautiful? What's in her? Thousands of people would be assembled to see that painting. Why? What is that? Only vibrations will tell you that it emits vibrations. It appeals to your spirit without your knowledge. You are not aware of it. It appeals to your spirit. That's why universally that painting is appreciated. But when this conditioning becomes connected, any such conditioning becomes connected and you accept this is the form that is beauty, this is the form that is reality, this is the form that is spontaneity, then the confusion starts. The confusion starts at that point, when it becomes a collective thing. For example, I met some people or some gurus, when I asked them, what makes you think that your guru is truthful, what has he given? He said, because sitting in my chair, I just start jumping by myself. I don't do it, but it happens, it's spontaneous. And in my presence, the way his body was moving was so horrifying. Any, anybody would have tremendous compassion and concern for such a person that who can't sit for five Excuse minutes. Excuse me, it wasn't spontaneous, it was nervousness. Yes, that's what I'm saying. But you are very wrong in what you talk. What? About everything. From where do you come? Up the road. <coughs> That's it. Better go. That's why I'm going home. Look at that. She'll go to the pub now. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> Must I to understand the subtleties, you see? If you are confirmed with what? Now, supposing somebody started jumping in the thing. And he says, and she says, it's two nerves. That means you are not in control of your nerves, isn't it? Don't you think so? You are not in control. You have not control. Spontaneity is a thing which is not the thing that makes you a slave. This is the point I'm trying to bring. It doesn't. It makes you a master. Spontaneity must make you a master and not a slave of it. So you must have come from TM because TM people jump like that. And they end up as epileptic people. I have cured so many of them. I don't know if someone has come from there. Even the head of their uh, academy in Scotland, who was the Flying Squad Academy as I call it, <laughs> where people paid 3,000. Now this gentleman sitting here is one of them who suffered. When they suffer, then they know what it is. And the other day we saw somebody with epilepsy of such frequency, the poor child, he was hardly 26 years of age, young man, supposed to enjoy his life, was going into such trauma you can't imagine. And if this is happening to somebody going to a guru, you paid for it, how can it be anywhere near spirit? This is what I'm trying to tell you. That spirit gives you spontaneity in which you are the master. You are the master of yourself, complete master, no enslavement of any kind, no habits formation coming, all habits stop. You become so, so spontaneous that I don't have to tell you, you just stop out all habits and you become a master of yourself. That should happen to you. Instead of that, if you indulge into things, which enslave you, you may like it for a while because you can't help it. But if you really sit down, you will know that it's not the thing that you wanted. You wanted to be the master of yourself. 
Now here in this map, as he shown, we have two powers, left and right powers. The left power is the power that gives us condition, left side, the subconscious, the collective subconscious. That gives us the condition. Now if you try to deny all that, then the right side is even worse. It gives us action, but with action we can become very ego-oriented. So both ways it can be troublesome. Supposing you say that, all right, I have no conditioning of any time, what's wrong in doing this, what's wrong in doing that? And if you just move with that idea, with that freedom, it will be abandonment, it may not be freedom, because freedom must have wisdom behind it. So both the sides, the movements on both the sides are wrong. So what is all right in the center is not to get conditioned, by anything and not to be ego-oriented. But how to do it is the problem. The problem is how to do it. To be spontaneous is to be absolutely free. Now I would consider these two powers as say a brake and an accelerator in a car. Now you use both the powers. You use the brake first, you use the accelerator, you try to control these two powers. But first of all it is difficult to understand how you to use these powers. Gradually with practice you use, you know how to drive the car, you become the good driver. After becoming the good driver, still you are not the master of the driver. But then you become the master. So today the master within us, within us is the spirit. But before realization, we are not the master. Because the master has not come in our conscious mind. It is not expressing in our conscious mind. In the sense that we are not empowered by its powers. The spirit exists. It has its own powers. But we haven't felt those powers within us. Once we see feel the powers of the spirit, we are empowered by our own powers which are there. The powers are within us. These are our own powers. We don't have to borrow from anyone, ask from anyone, they are in ourselves. The spirit is within us. Only thing that spirit has to give light in our, in our consciousness. It has to come in our consciousness is in simple medical terminology we can see, say that the spirit must manifest itself in our central nervous system, in our central nervous system, so that we should know what we are doing, not that we start just jumping on the, uh, on the chair or some people said, oh, you, you just start doing it. It is a process. It's not correct. You are not in conscious mind. You are doing it out of hypnosis. Hypnosis may be coming from outside force. It's not your force, your awareness, your understanding, your power. It is somebody else's because you are not doing it. As matter has a power to overpower us, in the same way there are some material things, I should say, which are very dangerous, which are placed. For example, now cancer. Take cancer. Cancer overpowers. It's a very serious thing. Cancer overpowers you. You cannot overpower cancer. Take a very concrete example. Now how is it caused? Doctor say this way, that way. <coughs> we, we, surge yoga can cure cancer. Definitely 100%. It can cure. It has cured. Many surge yogis have cured cancer. How? It's very simple. That you become master of your son. And you master the disease also. You master everything. Because the master is within you, it has not come in your conscious mind, it's the only link is left. And when that happens, yoga takes place, union takes place. We should now completely keep ourselves limited to self-realization about God, I'll tell you next time. Self-realization means to bring your spirit into your conscious mind. Now how cancer is caused? Let's see here what happens. It is caused by left-sided activity. Now left-sided activities are 
emotional traumas, emotional problems, emotional upheavals, emotional insecurities. Any kind of insecurity can take you to the left side. Little more movement can be these horrible gurus because they hypnotize. They put you to the left. They put some spirit in you or I don't know what they do, but they put you to the left. Any one of these activities which are not authorized by God, taken to, you go to the left. Because you cannot ascend in the center. So either you go to the left or to the right. When you overdo these things, it's like black magic, you have another thing here I've heard, uh, some sort of a organization had. And the fellow, you see, he used to, uh, everything he saw moving in the house, uh, he came to Sahaja Yoga and uh, his uh, water uh, jug was moving there and this was moving there and he couldn't explain what was happening in his room. He was sitting down and he found something moving from here to here. It happens. What is that? What is that doing this kind of a thing which you cannot control? Again, we come to the same thing. Something you cannot control. So you enter into the realm, into the realm where you are controlled and you are not under your control. And that realm, when you enter in, I have always seen all the cancer patients are the ones affected by this. Most surprising. They are not aware. They do not know how they get into it. For a lady, supposing say, she is suffering from an insecurity about her husband or maybe something, or maybe she thinks that her husband may leave her any time, she loves him, whatever it is. Such a woman might get a breast cancer because the insecurity is set in, in one of the centers there, which you can see here, the center of the heart, center heart as we call it. Now, if this center goes out of order, if a woman feels insecure for anything whatsoever, she is capable, she is vulnerable to be attacked and she can get it. So we have to understand life in totality and not in one way. The total impact of life, the total effect of life, the total relationship with life must be understood. Now no doctor knows this. Will he know? When he treats a patient for the, say, breast cancer, will he know that this lady is insecure? There's another disease, anorexia. Many girls suffer from it. Uh, they don't just eat, they just give up eating. Now, you do not know why it happens. Doctors can't cure it, nobody can cure it. What is the reason? The relationship of a girl, uh, of a daughter with a father. Say father dies and the daughter doesn't see the father. Or she, in heart she loves a father but she doesn't express it. Or well, there's some bad relationship that comes between the father and the daughter. You get this trouble anorexia. You'll be amazed. But it is impossible for doctors to get it. We have some doctors sitting here. It is impossible for any medical science to go near. Because they do not see a human being in its totality. It's a very delicate instrument for us. The way we are harsh with others, the way we sometimes try to trouble others, try to make others feel insecure or unfair, unjust, without our knowledge we really give them a tremendous insecurity. And such insecurities can work out incurable diseases of which we are not aware. So to understand the totality, what should happen to us? We should achieve that state where we can see the totality. Like if I have to see now, for example, the whole of Brighton, what should I do? I should go on a plane and see it from that height. I can see the whole. In the same way, in your awareness, in your understanding, you should rise to that point from where you can see the whole. If you cannot see the whole, the partial vision or we can say a little that you see can create 
confusion can create problems and some of them could be of a very, very serious nature. Because as human beings we do not know what are we. This is the greatest problem of human beings that they say, I don't like it. Now which one is this I? Is that your spirit or is that your ego? What is the part that is not liking it? Or is it your conditioning because you are brought up in a particular way so you don't like this? Which part of you is not liking it? And you will be amazed that it is not your spirit. Because if spirit likes, how will you know? It's only through your vibrations. When you can feel the vibrations, then only you will say, yes, my spirit likes it, because the vibrations are emitted. So we are still in a transition state as human beings. We have not achieved that state which is called as the state of self-realization, where you become the spirit. The becoming is the point. When you become the spirit, you know what you like. You really know what you really like. Because you are now the reality. You are not any conditioning. You are no more any ego. But you are what you are really. And that is your spirit. And surprisingly, this spirit is a collective being. It's no artificial collectivity within us, that also, all right, we belong to all Brighton, so we are one, or we belong to one uh, street, so we are one. It's not like that. But it's something that you are, absolutely, you are a collective being, and you start feeling that collectivity within you, with these different centers working it out. And you can feel it, others, you can feel others on your fingertips, can you believe? In the Bible it's written, that your hands will speak. The description of these days is that your hands will speak. Why not people who are fired or what does it happen? How can your hands speak? This is what happens that on your fingertips you start feeling and understanding what is reality, what is beauty, what is joy, what is love. This is the left side which we get and ultimately with these left side problems, we get physical pains. It's very painful to have left side problems. It's very, very painful. The pain cannot be explained, no one can understand, nobody can cure it, you can't tell anyone, and people think that you are fussing, they give you psychological treatments. You just don't understand why this pain is within you. And this pain comes to you from left side, the subconscious. The beyond the subconscious is the collective subconscious. And this collective subconscious is the one where whatever is created from the beginning up to today in the creation is within. And once you go to the subconscious, you just get lost there. You are so overpowered by this power of subconscious that it is beyond you to understand it, beyond you to get out of it, and be beyond you to not to succumb to it. And it goes on increasing. Like I asked some people, why did you go on doing it? When you knew that you were not doing it, somebody else was doing it, still why did you continue to do it? They said, Mother, we were under a blanket. It was darkness. We didn't know where we were moving. I we were just going on and on and on. And as I told you last time, feeling guilty is the biggest blockhead. It's the biggest blockhead. Because once you start feeling guilty, that the center on the left gets blocked and the, it's very difficult. And you don't know why you are feeling guilty. All the time you are feeling guilty, but you don't know why you are feeling guilty. Why these ideas are, of guilt are coming to you. That this feeling of guilt keeps you away from joy, from enjoying anything from being spontaneous. Why? And this explains why we sometimes are miserable for nothing. Actually, God has not created us to be miserable. 
He has made us so beautifully, so carefully. He has created us with such love and compassion not to make us feel miserable, not for anything. He doesn't give us any diseases, no problems. But we have done these things to ourselves by going to extremes on the left or the right. As I am today talking about Uglia on the left, I would say that to feel miserable for nothing at all is also wrong, is being unjust to yourself. The people who are left-sided must know that they are the spirit, that they are that beauty which has to come, which has to express itself, that they are not the people who have to suffer all the time and to live like miserable people. They are not. But because they take so much upon themselves, bear so much upon themselves, they become like that. And to avoid that bearing up, they may take to some other habits. You see, many people take to alcohol also for reason because they can't bear the pangs of life. They can't bear. That's why they take to. But once the spirit is awakened within you, you become so strong. You become so joyous so spontaneous that all these things drop on. All those things, so-called diseases, so-called habits, just drop on. And you become a new, blooming personality. Now, the basics of having this center within you, you can blame God for that. Why did He give us these centers on the left-hand side? What was the need? He should not have given us these left-sided ones. So we would have been just in the center to go. But the trouble is, the human beings have to know in their own freedom how to deal with themselves. They have to learn little hard way, the wisdom. They have to know by going to extremes, we have suffered. They have to realize it. Because if they have to become truly, absolutely free, they have to rise in their wisdom. If they are not wise people, then they cannot enter into the kingdom of God because they will be abandoned people. Say, people who are abandoned, who don't understand any laws and regulations, if you get them in England, we have to put them in jail. In the same way, human beings who have not got that wisdom within themselves, through sufferings only one learns, but we should not ask for suffering. When we ask for sufferings, we are asking actually for mistakes to begin with. How will you suffer if you do not commit mistakes? So when we ask for sufferings, we are committing mistakes. So what we should ask for is nothing but our spirit. And if you ask for your spirit, it is your own and you have to get it. It is in your own right that you are going to get it. It's no way that I am obliging you or doing something special for you. It's all there. You are like a light which is just to be enlightened because I am an enlightened light and you become an enlightened light and you can enlighten other lights also. It's very simple. If you become an enlightened light, you can enlighten others. You don't have to bother about anything else then. You become an enlightened light yourself. That's the point. It is all there. It is all your own. You have to just have it. It is as simple as that. There is Nothing very complicated as these people make it or anything that these philosophers have put before you. Nothing of the kind. It's very simple. It is within you. It is spontaneous. It is a living process. As in living process you have become human beings, you are going to become superhuman beings. It's absolutely spontaneous. You can't pay for it. How can you pay? I mean an absurdity. If it is a living process, how can you pay? How much do you pay to the tree to get, grow up? I mean, in anything living, do we pay anything? How much do we pay our nose to breathe? Can we pay for it? It's absurd. It's ridiculous. The way we pay for it, we cannot. It's a living process. You have to pick up. An egg has to become a chick. Now, how much do you pay to an egg to become a chick? Or how much does an egg pay to the mother for becoming uh, a chicken? It's that ridiculous. But we never understand that living things are so spontaneous. We, we never see living things. We live with matter. 
with, with the dead, not with the living things. If you start watching a tree, you start watching a flower, how it becomes a fruit? You can't even watch because it's done so slowly. You can't even watch a flower becoming a fruit. Suddenly you find all coming up. Like when I came uh, to London from India, I found all the trees were bare. Absolutely like dry sticks. Absolutely like dry sticks. Within a week, what I find is the green coming. And within the second week, it was all lush. Can't believe it. We never even notice. We take it for granted. It's happening. How does it happen? It's a miraculous thing. If you see it is miraculous, how these flowers, for example, the particular flowers are only on a particular tree, another, another are on another tree. How does it happen? Who chooses them? Who puts them in proper shape? Who organizes all that? And this is what one has to realize. And that is the all-pervading power of God that does all the living work. And once you become that the spirit, then this power starts flowing. You feel the power through you as Christ was touched and he said some power has gone to someone. Like that. You just become a medium of that power flowing. But you are empowered to maneuver it manage it, to understand it. You know completely about it. You know how to give it. You know how to work it out. You know how to cure others, cure yourself. You know the complete working of your machinery. Apart from that, you get the powers to overcome all the problems of your own machinery also. It's so fantastic. The whole thing sounds very fantastic because we have never seen this before. But to us it doesn't sound fantastic when we see all these flowers suddenly turning into fruits. It doesn't sound. But we see human beings turning into fruits. Then it sounds very fantastic. How can that be? It has never happened before. Only one person would get realization and it was such a difficult thing and nobody got it. How is it today? I say it is the blossom time which is being promised, which is being already prophesied even a great poet in your country, William Blake, has prophesied it. He said, these times will come when men of God will become prophets and these prophets will have power to make other prophets. I mean, nobody could be more precise than Blake, I tell you. He was so great to say this will happen and this is what we have to expect when we go to anybody for seeking, have you become prophets? And what is a prophet? Prophet is a person who is a collective being and who knows all about it. Who is the master? We call a prophet a master. And that's what you have to become, the master. And that mastery is very simple because it's all built within you. Just it has to be connected. Like uh, anything like a television set is to be connected to the mains. It's all built in, it's there, it just starts working. In the same way, you are that, you are that. Just it is to be connected. Whatever may be your caste, community, race, nationality, shapes, heights, anything, whatever it may be, makes no difference because all of you have got this great thing within you, this power of a rebirth. And you are to be born again and you will be born again. Why not today? There is nothing to get angry because people get angry sometimes because they don't like anybody telling them about something which of which they themselves are feeling bad. They don't like it. For example, if there is a drunkard and he drinks too much, he is an alcoholic, he doesn't like it and he feels bad and so somebody tells him even in the most gentlest way that you better give up drinking, he doesn't like it. But what I am saying is not that you should not do it. I said it will happen that it just drops up. I don't say you don't do this or don't do that, but it just happens and you must first understand what is the problem and how the problem is overcome. That's why I have to talk, otherwise there is no need to talk about it all. It just works out.
It just works out because you are just ready to have it and you just get it. I don't do anything. I am just a catalyst, I should say, but it works out. I hope you will ask me some questions about it first before we go in for any realization. If you have any questions, please ask. You must ask. Yes. Is there any difference to what, what you understand it as saying and to what, say, uh, Guru Maharaj? Who? Uh, oh. Guru Maharaj. No. I'll tell you one thing. When you talk about any Guru, I don't want to go into controversies. All right? That's the first thing I'll tell you. But I will tell you to ask yourself or ask anyone, what has he done for anyone? Has he been able to give you any power or anyone? the power. All right? Now, I can tell you all these who are here, who are realized souls who are here, they are just like you to look at. Of course, from face you can make out that they are very relaxed and very happy people. But they can cure people, they can give realization to people, they understand everything that is wrong with you and with themselves also. So what has he done to your event? Now, his disciples, what have they achieved? You ask them, where is the Kundalini of this person? What is the problem of this lady? Or what is uh, weighing upon her mind? They won't be able to say. If you cannot even make out what's wrong with another person or with yourself, how are you going to help? All such people, what do they do? Let us see. Simple thing is that they can't mess with us. You may feel happy for a while, it, just like drinking, you know, if you drink, you feel happy. But by drinking, what have you achieved? Have you become master? All of them are like that. You see, and this gentleman is so obviously because he asks for Rolls Royce. What is a Rolls Royce for a prophet? I mean, what does it matter? You see, my point is. This is so obvious, I mean, this is so logically obvious. First of all, anybody who takes money from you is a parasite. Simple as that. And to ask for Rolls Royce, of all the things, so you see, you have got Christ, you can see from Christ's life. Will you care for your Rolls Royces? To such a person, he's a king, he doesn't bother. Whether he has a Rolls Royce or not, whether he sleeps on the ground or not, it makes no difference. Such a person doesn't care for anything. Because he is in comfort, he has got his own comfort. He is a man of self-respect. Do you think we really ask for anything whatsoever? I mean, it's so obvious. For you people it is so obvious. But when I talk to some people of this guru, the particular one you are telling me, they said, Mother, we give him the metal and he gives us the spirit. Can there be an exchange? Can you purchase your spirit? Use your logic. All right? God has given us brains to understand. Logically we can understand. Can you, can you purchase, can you purchase the spirit? Isn't it so simple? We can't pay for it, my child. We cannot. If you want to give me a flower, all right, it's just an expression of your love and that's all. But you can't purchase me. You can't. Your love can purchase me, all right. That's different. But you can't purchase me with metal and money. Then what is a Rolls Royce? I mean, I don't understand. What are all these crowns and things? What are they good for? They don't give you job. Go and ask the people who wear the crowns. Yes, the other day I was with, with a stature poor thing. She was so miserable. <laughs> yes, she was. You know, I tried to sort of put her down, her vibrations. She was very miserable. We were just across the table talking to each other. And what I was doing was to balance her poor thing. She was she's very upset. So you must understand, you are two simple people. You are seekers of ancient times. You are not seekers of today. You are seekers of ancient times. And this time has been promised to you before all. And now you have to fight it. Now, you must keep your logic straight forward. I mean, anybody who asks for Rolls Royce, I mean, this is one of the stark examples I would say. 
cannot be in him. He is a star temple, absolutely, one of the. But there are subtler ones. He is not so subtle. You will get out of it in no time, I know all of you. But the subtler ones are even worse. Some of them may not even ask for money. May not. I don't know of any, but there may be some. Because I heard about someone who doesn't now take money in India. He has made money here and now he's gone to India and he doesn't take money from them. But the one who has really not taken money, one person whom I know, has been using women. He is not interested in money part, he is using money, you are with You see, so this is what it is, you must understand. His interest is not in your spirit, but in your person, in your women. Imagine. How can holiness be combined with these dirty habits of people? That means they themselves are under the control of their desires, which are anti-God. These are all anti-God activities. <coughs> and you people being so simple-hearted, I tell you, you are so simple-hearted. If you tell an Indian that the Guru takes a rose as he said, I have, they immediately they will answer, they know all this guy. How can Nobody will give to any Guru in India. Gurus have to pay people sometimes <laughs> first to entice them. Westernized Indians is different, but those who are really Indians, they, they, you see, they are. People live with the mothers and they know what is what, you know, nobody can be fooled. They are very practical people. Yes, my child? Can you be healed through faith? Huh? Can you be healed through faith? Oh, the, the faith is two types, with what we call in Sanskrit is Shraddha. It's different from what you call as faith. In English they use it as blind faith and another as faith, all right? We can make it like that. Now, the blind faith is this, that I have got faith in God and God will heal me. This is one faith, all right? Another is a faith which is enlightened where I say you are the Spirit when you are connected. Now, if you say that I have faith in God, you shouldn't feel hurt when I tell you the truth, all right? Because if it is a blind faith, means that you are not yet connected with the power. Not connected. See? Now supposing I start saying, Christ, 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 Christ. Christ is not in my pocket. I can't even meet a prime minister or a queen without having a protocol or a connection or some sort of a, uh, you see, position or uh, we can say a authority, isn't it? Now when we talk of anyone like that, some people go saying Rama, 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 Krishna, Krishna. You see, these are all incarnations and Christ is the Son of God. He is the Son of a King and you just can't meet Him. You can't just call Him. He's not at your beck and call. He's not your servant. All right? Now, to have in faith like that when you are not connected, if you are healed, you are healed by some other agencies, not by Christ. But if you are a realized soul and then you are healed, then it is done by Christ. I'll tell you a difference, a very clear cut difference of feeling. We have in England, we had, I don't know now if you have that one, it's an organization called uh, International Curative Center of Late Dr. Lang. Now this Dr. Lang was dead, I mean he was late. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a curative center. You see, and this gentleman died. And he possessed a man in uh, Vietnam, a soldier, not his own son, but a soldier. Now this soldier was told by this fellow, I mean they, they are very honest people, being English they are honest and they tell the truth, you see, they don't say that we do it through God or anything. 
So they, he told that there are many doctors, I hope the doctors won't mind, who have died and who were very ambitious, are still wanting to cure people. And he should go back to my son and tell him all the story that I have come in you and my son will believe. So he said, how will you believe me? He said, no, no, I will tell you some secrets which only he and me, both of us, share. So he definitely believe. So this fellow agreed. He was a very healthy fellow. Actually, this spirit entered into him when he got into a certain shock. Something he saw shocked him in the war and this spirit entered. And he was carried by that spirit somehow or other to England where he met his son and he told the whole story. And the son had to believe because he knew so many secrets. And they started this curative set. Now how do I come to know of late Mr. Lang it is the thing. They cured a lady who was in India. Long time back, it was 1970, I am telling you. And she came to see me and she was all shaking, you know, she's like this. I said, what's this? She said, I was sick with a certain disease and I was afraid of an operation. And I came to know about this organization, I wrote to them. And they wrote to me saying that at this time, on this date, we we'll enter into your body. Openly, I mean, they don't say that we are God or anything. We we'll enter into your body and you feel a little shaking, doesn't matter, and you sleep off and we'll work it out. And she said, I got cured of that disease. But after three years or so, the whole body started shaking. And she couldn't bear it anymore and she came to see me. That's how I came to know about Dr. Lang. See, that he has, this poor lady was tortured for three years. She suffered so much. And then she came to see me. So after Mr. Lang entered into her body, Dr. Lang, it was after six years that she came to see me because three years she was all right. And after three years it started. And that's how I came to know all the spirits that had entered into her, the doctors and all that. It was a horrible case. Of course, she got cured later on, no doubt. Because when you become the spirit, you are in your fort. Nobody can enter into your body. You become something which doesn't get contaminated, doesn't get overpowered. Nobody can dominate. Nishabd Dhyan Me Bane Rehte Hai दोनों हाथों को जोड़कर श्री माता जी के श्री चरणों में प्रार्थना अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी 
आज का यह सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं श्री माता जी आज के अमृत वाणी में आपने जो हमें ज्ञान प्रदान किया है कृपा कर वह हमारे अंदर घटित हो जाए श्री माता जी संपूर्ण जग में विश्व निर्मला धर्म स्थापन करने हेतु कृपा कर आप हमें सहयोग प्रचार प्रसार का एक शुद्ध और सशक्त माध्यम बनाइए परम पूज माता जी कृपा कर हमारी सभी प्रार्थनाओं को स्वीकार कर हमें आशीर्वादित कीजिए नमस्कार कर कलेक्टिव बंधन लेते हैं आज का ध्यान केंद्र यहीं पे संपन्न होता है आप सबका हृदय से धन्यवाद जय माता जी